Now that we have a basic understanding of variables, we can talk about how you would store more than one value in a single variable. So if I want to store five, six, seven, I could give a different variable for each one of these, but that's going to be a bit tedious, especially if I have thousands of values that I need to store. So instead, we're going to use two different types of storage here. One is called an array and the other is called a dictionary. Now an array is enclosed in square brackets. And what we'll do is list all of the items we want to store separated by commas inside these square brackets. So I can say five, six, seven in there. And an array is an ordered list. So this is the first item. This is the second item. And this is the third item. And we will reference these items through their index or their position in the array. And it's important to note that these indices are zero based. So the first item has the index of zero, the next item one, and the next one two. So if I want to pull out a specific value from this list, I will use that index in order to get it. So let's demonstrate that. I can say print x to print the entire array or I can say print x1 and that's going to print the item of index 1 which is 6. So arrays are particularly useful for grouping sets of related data and you can think of it as storing multiple variables inside of a single variable. So I could say x1 equals x1 plus 1. So in our first video, we showed how x equals x plus 1 just increments that value. And what this is going to do is the exact same thing, but to this specific value in the array. So if I now print out item of index 1 from the array x, we'll see that it has been incremented by 1. Now we can in fact store whatever type of data we want in an array. So I can put a string as the first item, an integer as the second, and then a floating point decimal as the third. And Python will handle that just fine. But I want to stress again that an array is an ordered list. That is, you reference things by their order in the array. And if your list has 10,000 items in it, that might be kind of difficult to do, especially if you don't know exactly what the index is of the particular item you're looking for. So that is where we would use what's called a dictionary. So it has a similar syntax to the array, and actually I'm going to just comment out the array, that way you can compare them. And I will say x equals curly brackets. And this curly brackets are going to define a dictionary. And a dictionary, is structured in key value pairs. So we'll have key, we'll have a colon, and then we'll have a value. And what we'll do is reference the value by its key. So I can say print x square brackets and then key. And this will print out value. So you can think of the key as the index of a particular item but rather than being in ordered, it's a named set. And once again, you can set these parameters to whatever you want. So an integer as the key, a floating point as the value, a floating point as the key, and a string as the value, whatever you want can be these key value pairs. And you will separate them by a comma, just like you would in the array. The important difference is that in the array, we reference items by their position, whereas in the dictionary, we reference things by their name. To give an example of this, let's show two instances of when you might use each one. So let's say we have temperature data. Now, we're going to say that this is measuring the temperature at 8 a.m. every day for a week. So we'll have seven values, and let's just do Celsius of one degree, two degree, five degrees, three, six, seven, nine degrees Celsius. Okay, 
Now, we know that the first day is in the first column, and we know the second day is in the second column. We know the third day is in the third column. So we don't need to use a dictionary here. You could imagine doing the same thing as a dictionary, and you would say day one, one, day two, etc., etc. And this is just superfluous. We know that they are in the order of the days. So using an array here makes a lot more sense. But let's say we have something like nutrition data. Here, we might have a unordered collection of information. So protein units, and this would be in grams. Or we would have protein value, and we'll say it's 100. And in between that, you might have sodium value, and that's going to be 10. And so you can see that not only are the pieces of information not in a particular order, but also if we just had the values seeing G, 10, 100, is not particularly obvious what these things are just from looking at them. So as an array, this would look like this. And that isn't clear. So in this instance, having a dictionary instead of an array is much more useful. Now where these become interesting is when you can embed one within the other or one within itself. So let's start with what's called a two-dimensional array. So what I can do is say x equals an array, and I can say that the first item in this array is itself an array. So I can say one, two, three. And the second item in the outer array is going to be four, five, six. So if I reference x zero, that is going to point to this array. So this index refers to the outer array. I can be more specific and say in that particular item, go to index two. And that will say this particular value. So I can put an array within an array to create a multi-dimensional array. And you can embed these pretty much as deep as you want. Similarly, you can do the same thing with a dictionary. So we can open our dictionary and say one, and that key refers to a value that is itself a dictionary. And we'll say that it has the key one with the value one, the key two with the value two, and we'll do a similar thing. I can say x one, and that is going to print out this object, this dictionary, the inner dictionary. And then I can be more specific and say one. So this will refer to first this object, and then it will look for the key one in here. So this will return one. Naturally, you can also embed one within the other. So I can say x equals an array of dictionaries. Or I can make a dictionary where the first key points to a value that is an array. So both the array and the dictionary have their utility in Python, and depending on the sort of data you are using, you will want to apply each one of these in the ways that are most effective. So if this video was useful for you, please leave a like. It helps me grow the channel, and it will help other people find the video. And again, if you would like to see these tools used in a broader context, I recommend checking out my Developer Diary series, where I am working long term on big projects and actually putting these tools to use. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next one.